and welcome to Creating Applications with Unix Tools. My name is Ray Swartz. I'm the founder and president of Berkeley Decision Systems, a consulting firm specializing in C and Unix training. And I'll be your instructor for this video course. The goal of this video course is to cover several powerful Unix commands and to show you how to create applications by combining these commands together with some other features of the Unix system. This course is designed for experienced Unix users and would not be appropriate for someone who had never used Unix before. Specifically, we're going to cover how the Unix system works, shell meta characters, regular expressions, Unix filters, and creating pipelines. The video training course consists of three parts. The first part is the video presentation you're currently watching. The second part is a book I wrote on this very topic called Unix Application Programming, Mastering the Shell. When I refer to the text, I'll use words like book or text. Part three is the course manual. When I use words like course notes or course manual, I'll be referring to the contents of the manual. Most of the topics we're going to be covering are covered in more detail in the text than in the tape. And this is the purpose of the course manual, so that you can keep track of where we are in the tape in the book. The book contains exercises, additional material, and there will be times when I'll be asking you to read chapters in the book to supplement the material we're presenting on the tape. It's best to keep the textbook and the course manual nearby as you're going through this video course. The goal of this video course is to tell you more about how Unix works and the components that make it work. As such, this course has been divided into three segments. The first segment is going to describe how a command becomes an executing program. Second, we're going to cover a set of commands that Unix provides to do text processing. The third part will show you how to combine these tools together to create applications. In this section, we're going to talk about how the commands that you enter become executing programs. The Unix system was designed to be portable, and that design permeates the entire Unix system. I think it's important to understand how that design works as you create programs. The more you understand about this design, the better you'll be able to take advantage of all the pieces of it. The idea behind portability is that the Unix system cannot know anything about the underlying hardware that it runs on. The reason for this is because the more tightly Unix is connected to hardware, the more difficult it is to move the system somewhere else. As a result, the Unix system is built upon two abstract ideas that have nothing to do with underlying hardware. In fact, they attempt to separate the Unix system from the underlying hardware. The first one is that all data looks alike. The second one is that every program is executed within its own environment. Data represents two problems to portability. Different devices represent data differently. Secondly, the interface between a device and the computer is different for different devices. To handle these differences amongst devices, any of which are liable to be connected to a machine that is running Unix, Unix has to insulate itself from the individual devices that are out there. To do this, the Unix system creates a single interface to all kinds of data that it uses, whether that comes from a device or some other source. 
The Unix system assumes that all data is text-based data and is simply a stream of characters. That is, one character after the other moving through the system. Now, devices generally don't deal with data this way. What sits between the devices and the Unix system is a software interface called a device driver. The purpose of the device driver is twofold. On one end of it, it takes and gives characters to and from the Unix system. On the other end, it talks to the individual device that it's connected to in a hardware-specific manner. In this way, the device gets what it wants, and the Unix system gets a consistent interface to all the devices that are connected to the system. The second problem we have involves the interface between the Unix system and these individual devices. To make sure that data files and all the devices connected to the system have the same interface, the Unix system views all sources and destinations of data as files in the file system. In this way, the Unix system provides a single interface to every device that is or could be connected to the system. Thus, if a program can read and write to one device, it can read and write to all the devices. This greatly simplifies the problem of portability because once a program can handle that single interface, it can handle every interface on the Unix system. The second thing you need to be aware of is how the Unix system executes programs. However, before a program can be run, the system has to know something about it, such as which user is executing it for the permission system, what's the current directory so it can move from there, and other environmental settings that we'll learn about shortly. As a result, a program needs to execute within an environment that identifies this information. A program in an environment is called a process, and every command you execute is run within a Unix process. Thus, a process is an environment within which a program executes. Part of a process's environment is the data sources and destinations of the program that it's running. Because the devices on the system all look like streams of characters, it doesn't matter where a process reads data or where a process sends characters. They all look alike. Part of the process is the actual devices that are connected to this process. These get connected when the process is created, which is when you execute your command. Processes consist of six parts. A program to execute, a place to read data called the standard input, a place to send output called the standard output, and a place to send error messages called the standard error. There's also a global environment which defines the user in the current state of the system and a local environment, which is used to define the current state of this process only. Everything done on a Unix system is done by a process. In order to execute a command, you'll have to create a process to do so. You can write a C program to create a process, though most users would find this too difficult. Instead, the Unix system supplies a program to do it for you. This program is called the shell and is actually the user's interface to the Unix system. There are three shells that almost all Unix users find themselves using. Either the born shell, the C shell, or the corn shell. And you undoubtedly are using one of those three. The purpose of the Unix shell is to turn a command line into an executing process. The user tells the shell what to do by entering a command line. This means 
that a command line doesn't get executed directly. Instead, the command line describes what process the user wishes to create. The shell reads the command line as a description of a process and then creates that process which Unix begins executing. Because a command line is not directly executed, you need to view a command line as a description of the process you want created for you. The shell is the one that actually creates the process. To make it easier for you to describe your process to the shell, the shell provides you with a process description language. This language consists of odd characters, some of which you may be familiar with. We will call them shell meta characters. Executing a Unix command is actually a three-step process. First, you enter the command line to the shell. Second, the shell searches the command line for any of these special meta characters which tell it how to create the process. The third step is for the shell to actually create that process and begin it executing on the Unix system. Recall that a Unix process consists of six parts. Your command line has to specify four of those parts. You have to identify the program to run, the place where the process is to read input, where it's to send output, and where error messages are supposed to go. Because of the portable design of the Unix system, all data sources and destinations look alike. Streams of characters. That's the reason why you have to specify where a process reads data and where a process writes data. Because there's no other way for Unix to determine where a process gets and sends data. They all look alike. Your command line must specify this. It's possible that you've been entering commands without specifying this, and this may confuse you. If you don't specify where data comes from and where it goes to using meta characters, the shell will substitute a default source and destination. The default is to use your keyboard as the standard input and your terminal screen as both the standard output and the standard error. Let me give you an example. When you enter a command, like the date command, the output comes to your terminal because you didn't tell the shell to send it anywhere else. So the shell took the default and sent the output of this process to the terminal. This marks the end of section one. I've tried to describe how a command line becomes a process. The components of a Unix process and the part the shell plays in making a command line into a process. In the next section, we'll take a detailed look at the meta characters you can use in telling the shell more about the process you wish to create.